The Native Youth Camp is an opportunity to bring together Indigenous youth from all over the Northeast and we come together to, to really look at the intersections between science and culture. My brother uh, told me about it and he was looking for someone to take him, uh, the kids over. It's about a 10 hour drive. We have about 30 Native youth here at, at Native Earth Youth Camp this year and they have come from as many as seven different Indigenous nations. I come from the Wabanaki Confederacy. Uh, it consists of Penobscot, Passamaquoddy, Mousy and Mi'kmaq from Maine. And in years past, we've had students from as far away as the Diné people of, of Arizona. We've had Menominee from Wisconsin, Oneida people join us as well. So it's an opportunity to recognize all those things that we have in common as Native peoples and, and also to celebrate the different perspectives that people bring. So there's as much teaching going on between communities and between students as between teachers and students. We work in partnership with the Haudenosaunee Environmental Task Force. And so for the first week, we take the youth all up to an island in the St. Lawrence. And then because we're trying to do this dance essentially between traditional ecological knowledge and scientific ecological knowledge, we then bring the students here to the Cranberry Lake Biological Station. So the students were just doing Haudenosaunee uh, social dances. Our head drummer, Dean George, an elder from, from Makwazasne, who comes in and teaches with us, um, was telling us that there are dances for almost every species and every activity. And so what a wonderful way to bring people together through music and dance and while you dance to be honoring that element of creation. The whole camp is organized around the Haudenosaunee Thanksgiving Address. So we have a day devoted to the waters, we have a day devoted to the trees, to the medicines, to the four-leggeds. And as you say, today was our day for looking at those beings who live in the water. And so many people have become really disconnected from the beings that are around them. And so what we're trying to do is to re-familiarize the, the students with the, the life in the water, the fish, the dragonflies, the mosses, the little minnows, the crayfish, um, to get to know them once again and to know what their ecological roles are. A lot of the organisms in a stream, especially a swift flowing stream like we were in this morning, can get swept away in the current. And so they hide themselves in those moss mats. Do you feel how gritty it is in there? And that's that moss actually, the, that, that grit is all the, well, it's all the particulates, all the sand and things from upstream. And that, these mosses actually clean the stream. And that's what you're feeling. They've grabbed onto all of those, the sand and the sediment and that makes the rest of the water really clean. Oh man, look at those legs. So they were all hiding out in the moss, eh? So we gonna put them in the bucket? Sure. And why do you think the things living there would choose to live in the moss as opposed to like somewhere else, like on the bottom or on the rock? Um, maybe because it's nice there. Why is it nice? Because uh, they can probably eat the bugs that will come through. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And where do you think you would choose to live in the uh, aquatic environment? On a rock. On a rock? Why? Sure, it's total immersion field biology and it's that sense of re-engaging curiosity again and, and our natural powers of observation. When you start turning under, over rocks and looking under them and you see all of these beings that you had never seen before, I, I think it, 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 um, it does waken our curiosity and, and, our, and our, our interest in, in natural science and the environment as well. Guys, you want to take a look at a wood frog? And you see the black banding across his eyes? That's how you know it's a wood frog. This, that spring peeper would have a nice X mark on the back of the spot. So now, Asias took the wood frogs, so now Asias also has a responsibility of making sure he gets back to where he found them from, which is the one, number one most important rule of collecting. That we want to collect and we want to learn, but all these organisms, you know, they're like our brothers and sisters, right? Right, we go over that, they need to go back exactly where they found we found them too, so they can take 
continue their spot in the circle of life. Same thing with these insects. All these larvae, we're going to take them back to the lab so that you can all um, look at them. But we're going to have to take them back here later. All right? So I'm going to give this to you. You got this? You want to put them back exactly where you found them. In, in indigenous ways of thinking, we everything that we do is done in a holistic way. If we think about that medicine wheel, it's divided into mind, body, emotion, and spirit. So a whole person is the person that does science and culture. Oftentimes, Western science is just intellectual, um, but we try to bring culture into it in order to honor all of those ways that human beings understand and care for their world. Neil Patterson from Tuscarora Nation is a, is a SUNY ESF grad, a fish biologist, head of the environment program at his, for his own nation. One of the beautiful things that Neil does in his teaching is again to connect culture and science. This is the state fish. Um, it is a native, it's always been here. Our people have been eating this for thousands of years, this fish right here. So what he's done this morning is to catch a, a, a brook trout from Sucker Brook behind us. And what he's showing the students is how that animal is put together. All of its adaptations, how it swims, how it breathes, how it feeds. The students learn all about the different parts of the fish on the outside. They'll open that fish to, uh, to prepare it to eat. And they'll look at the, um, the whole body systems in there. And so they see where that liver is. They see where the stomach is, which is important to traditional food waste. Um, to know where are the, for example, where are the pollutants going to be um, concentrated in that fish. And that's the part, of course, that you, that you wouldn't eat. What kind of things do you think that uh, is exciting them the most? I think meeting other youth their age, uh, native people, and then getting to share, you know, the experiences they've had together. Uh, and just being out away from, you know, at first they didn't want to leave their cell phone and their computers, but once they're here, they're like, geez, it's kind of nice, you know. Throughout our time together here at Native Earth, those are the things we try to focus on. What were, the, what was the indigenous science? What were the indigenous life ways, um, and and the, the sophisticated traditional knowledge that people had to, to to possess in order to live sustainably in this place. And oftentimes, Native students have been somehow given the message that indigenous cultures and traditional values are somehow at odds with Western science. But in ecology and in environmental science, we see that they can be very closely meshed.